In the previous lesson, we used the rotoscoping or a roto uh, tool and roto paint to cut out an image and create a kind of a photo montage. And uh, we discover how we can do this with different techniques using the green screen, using the alpha channel on a PNG image, and uh, using also animation with the green screen in this other uh, example right here. So it's easier when we have like a really static video or a an image because it is not moving. It's easy to like cut out the edge of uh, a subject in the foreground. And also if we want, we can cut off part of the background and you know, like the sky and replace it with another sky. Now it's more difficult when we are in an animation situation, like with the image that is not static. So I'm just gonna create here a new, well, first of all, I wanna show you again, this is a, a green screen animated 3D infographic that we downloaded and used in the previous lesson. So you can check that. Now, of course, you can um, use the alpha channel, especially if you, if you use like 3D application, this is a blender animation. And if you click and drag here, now that's going to be uh, a single image. So, and it's not, it, it doesn't have the, the background because it has the, the alpha channel. So if, if we want to get the whole sequence, we need to select all the frames, click and drag, and now we have all the frames. And since, again, this is a uh, sequence of PNG files, they all contain an alpha channel, so we don't have the background. So the the two easiest options when you want to have like an animated uh, footage or a video or a 3D animation like this is to have either the green screen or the alpha channel. So now if I bring this in a merge node and I apply a background, I can like basically put anything in the back, like a constant color. Uh, let's see the checkerboard. So let's see some new nodes. So this is the checkerboard right here, and it's, uh, uh, let me uncheck here, unlink this. So we want that to go in the B channel, which is going to be the background. So now you can see the original animation with the background, uh, with the checkerboard background. So that's how easy it is. Uh, you don't need to do basically anything in, in Natron, just, you know, link the things in the correct order. Now I'm going quick with some of the uh, features that we already saw in the previous lessons. So if you wanna go back and check those again, we already explained most of these uh, tools and techniques. So I wanna get a video here uh, that I got in my computer. So it's uh, an Icelandic waterfall, which we already used before. So I want to link this video again in a merge node. So let's link it as a background. And so this is not a, you know, a really uh, quick animation or uh, it's a really static video. You don't have like many things going around. It's just a landscape video, but the camera is moving. So that's also, you know, something uh, that is gonna change the situation over time. You can see it's like rotating the view. So uh, it's not a static image. So you have an increased level of difficulty if you need to do operations here like rotoscoping or things like that. So you cannot have like a static roto, but you need to transform it. You need to change at least its position. So you can have animated camera or, you know, moving camera in your video or act or 3D animation like the, these two examples that I that we saw, or you can have like moving characters or a moving object inside your animation or your video. And so depending on the complexity of the animation in there, you can use the roto or, you know, and having more difficulty with that or not. So let's start here at frame 50. You can see I'm, I'm defining here uh, the starting point to frame 50. I have applied the roto node by pressing O in the node editor and I want to use the base here. So 
I will quickly go here on the edge of the mountains and the hills of this landscape because I want to get rid of the of the sky or maybe I want to keep the sky I don't know I will decide later so just click on the edge here if you click once it's gonna create corners but that's fine because we're gonna feather this and again depending on how much time you spend you can be more detailed more you know refined or quicker like this like I did right now but just you know because uh, I don't want to spend too much time uh, right now just to show you how it works so if I use pre multiply now in the roto node uh, it's gonna cut off the rest so it's gonna mask it's gonna leave only the the, the parts that we selected inside I can also add a pre mold node pressing tab and searching for it right here so either I do that or I use the pre mold okay now I can uh, like fix all the little points here if I want to do the opposite I'm just gonna click and drag the points that are on the outside they're on not on the edge on the other side so right now is cutting off the the sky and it's keeping the landscape below so depending on how you adjust here the the roto mask you can have a different effect now in the roto shape let's select it here and on the layer and let's increase the feather there you go so we have a nice feather and I this is you know something you need to do because um, it's not gonna blend with the rest of the or with the different background so it's recommended you do that a little bit of feathering and then here I'm adjusting the points so you can go back refine adjust the points add new points change them into curves you can check the alpha to see what's happening or go back to RGB in the viewer again that's everything we already saw so far for the roto tool in the previous lesson so it's kind of a review but now we're gonna also do a little bit of animation now another tool I want to show you here is the shader toy so you can press tab look for the shader toy now I'm just gonna place it correctly in the background so B the A is the landscape the B is my shader toy and the shader toy is another you know effect generator that can be used for many reasons you can see it's changing the color there so it's an animated effect now we we can also notice another thing that when we move around well the mask is gonna stay there and that's not gonna be good now before we continue let's just go quick over the shader toy so you have your the possibility to load other libraries or you can go in the presets by expanding the the image shader section and you can select many of these so if you go into source now these are like procedural or parametric effects that you can also uh, customize a little bit so let me change this let me go into cloud so you can see this is kind of a cloudy background apparently now you can change your some of the parameters like the density the radius I think that's a, like a little cloud but now it's hidden behind the landscape you can change the color of the sky the color of the Sun now let me just move this mask a little bit down so we can see I want to I you don't want to select each single point I want to select all and so just Okay, let me get it from here and push it down. There you go. So that's the cloud there that, it, that it's been automatically generated and it's animated. So this is why you can use uh, the shader toy to create, you know, many of these presets effects. This is this one here is like uh, a green la uh, light in there or you have fireballs and all these interstellar or all these sorts of stuff. This is fractal. And so on so I'm not, I'm not gonna go through all of those but you know remember that there is an, another tool at your disposal here this is infinite fall which looks like a cloudy turbulent sky on the background well it doesn't matter the, the matter what matters is, is that we can see here that there is a gap because going forward in the video well that's 
part of the landscape, that edge 